Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and thanks so much for clicking on this video. I've been talking about this build for quite a while now on my Instagram, so hopefully you've come over to, from Instagram to check out this video, but we are building a XR, a Honda XR650L, an, an iconic motorcycle, something that's been around for 30 years. This is the 30 year anniversary and we've teamed up with Fieldcraft Survival to build this bike. It is going to be what we call the ultimate bug out bike because in my opinion, this bike is going to be something that in the worst case scenario, probably one of the bikes that would last. I've got Mike Hernandez here from Fieldcraft Survival. Mike, go ahead and tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, man. Thank you, appreciate it. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for stopping by. Obviously we're in the Hernandez garage today, uh, but really excited. I think we checked the history on this before we came on and yeah. it's like an eight time champion of the Baja 1000 yeah, the Baja the, races. Yeah, the predecessor, the, the 650R. So super excited to get this. It's a budget build, um, carbureted, just legendary bike. So super excited to be a part of this. Uh, super excited to represent Philcraft and kind of also bring you onto the fold with us and the stuff that we're doing. So yeah, bro, pleasure. Yeah, and then we'll also have a huge shout out to Rocky Mountain ATV MC. They are a co-sponsor of this video. Um, they provided all the parts for this build because this is a budget build. They offer excellent quality budget parts. So uh, most of the links for this will be down below and check out RockyMountainATVMC.com for anything that you were looking for for your motorcycle. But let's go ahead and just get into it. So we have a 2023 XR 650L. And as I mentioned, this is an iconic bike. It's been around for 30 years, virtually unchanged. Uh, we decided to go with a brand new one just because of the availability. We actually looked for a used one for a little bit and for the cost of a used one right now, it was just easier to go out and buy a brand new one. This bike off the showroom floor was $7,000 um, and you can find these bikes 10 years old or so, and they're still gonna be in that four and $5,000 range. So if, if you're looking for even a more budget bike, definitely pick up a used one. Um, and the nice thing about that is they, again, are virtually unchanged. So something that was built in 2000 is gonna be the same as 2023. But uh, the main things that we're gonna be doing to this motorcycle are changing some ergonomics and protection. As you can see from the factory, it doesn't come with any really good hand protection. The handlebars have a kind of that old school sweep to them. So we want more of a dirt bike feel. And then as far as like engine protection goes, not a whole lot there. We've got this little cage that kind of protects here, but nothing really underneath the motorcycle. So we'll be adding a skid plate. And then finally, as far as performance goes, we'll be adding some traction. So some, some tires from Rocky Mountain as well. And then we're gonna be adding a carburetor kit and an exhaust just to give that little bit more of a grunt and that little bit more a peppy power that we can get out of this bike. So as far as parts goes, again, we have our hand guards from Rocky Mountain shift levers, mirrors, kind of the whole gamut of, of protection parts. One thing that we're concerned about on this bike is to be able to carry more weight as well. So we're gonna have a back rack, a tail rack, as well as the, uh, the support system that supports the subframe to the motorcycle. That way we're not having any issues when we add the, the camping gear and all that kind of stuff. So down below here, we've got our skid plate our bars, and again, our exhaust. And then in the next part of this episode, me and Mike are gonna load up, the, load up these motorcycles and we're gonna go do some camping on them, take it out here in the Arizona desert, go, go do some sand washes, find some stuff that we can get into, find a nice camp spot, and really enjoy how this motorcycle performs. Lastly, to get us where we wanna go, we have the Trail Tech Voyager Pro. Trail Tech sent, sent us one of these as well to put on the motorcycle. Excellent GPS, super rugged, something that will really work well with this motorcycle build. So we've got to this point, and one thing I didn't mention earlier in the intro is that we also are going to be replacing this 2.8 liter gas tank with a Sherby's 5.8 liter gas tank, which will give us more than double the range. So pretty excited about that. We're gonna go ahead and put this on now. Mike over here working on the new fancy headlight. Pretty. Of course, it just here. replaces all the OEM hardware here. And we've got this nice LED with running light. 
quite a bit brighter than stock headlights yeah. as well. This subframe support over here is getting there. It has been kind of a pain in the butt, but we're getting there. I like that. Okay, so we're right in the thick of this build. Made a lot of progress. I'm going to show you where we are. Got the nice rear subframe support bracket. Basically bolts to the frame here. Has some bracketry that comes up. Comes to the frame here. So you have kind of a triangle on both sides. It also mounts to the rear rack. We've got our Lex exhaust on with the little header pipe that goes on there. Getting ready to pull the carburetor off and replace the jets. That way our jets match our new exhaust. We got our handlebars put on. We have our double take mirror and we're just gonna have to work on getting the controls right. These have the little indentions. So we're gonna have to drill some holes in the handlebars to make those work out. Also, we got our new fancy smancy headlight and a proper skid plate, bash plate, whatever you wanna call it. So uh, nice, heavy duty, thick aluminum. That is definitely gonna protect the engine more than what this stupid thing did. Next thing we're gonna do is replace the uh, shifter and the brake lever on this side. Just get everything all buttoned up and we'll wrap up this project, throw on some luggage and we'll take this thing out, give her a little rip and uh, do some moto camping. How close is that? Uh, you're almost there and so am I. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> So just trying to wrap up some loose ends on this build. We've got the tank on, working on some electrical here with blinkers and whatnot. Just have to throw the seat back on. But one thing that uh, isn't really that big a deal, but kind of makes a little bit of difference is this is battery box. A lot of guys delete this battery box. Uh, we're not gonna screw with it. We're gonna keep the factory uh, air box intact just for kind of reliability purposes, but check this out. So it, it comes with a lead acid battery. It is a sealed battery. But look at the size difference. We've got this battery here that probably weighs, I don't know, what would you say, like? That's got a couple pounds on it, man. Yeah, that's probably like seven, seven yeah. or eight pounds. Yeah. And then we have this Tusk lithium battery, which is, Nothing. I mean, it's maybe a pound. This is like a Chihuahua, like let's say four to seven pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then this is like literally nothing. It's just nothing. so light, so. So we're on the road here with the uh, XR650. And man, I'm pretty freaking impressed with it. It's actually pretty dang smooth, agile, and the air that you get is nice and clean. You got some good uh, acceleration. So getting here on the highway, you'll see no problems at all. It cruises at 70, no problem. And it's got a lot of like acceleration. I mean, it's not a sport bike by any means, but it means hanging with traffic. On the highway, the suspension's nice and flush enough to where it doesn't feel like it beats you up. It's no canyon carver, but you know, I feel like you could easily put a set of super photos on here and rip it. Just getting off the pavement, gonna hit some, some sandy roads, Arizona sandy roads. It does 
feels better than a GS does, I can tell you that. about sunset well after a successful bike build and a successful shakedown run we made it to this pretty awesome campsite Ugh. Mikey's dying back here yeah, bro. keeps cramping up, cramping up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we had enough water today but, water today. but man the sunset right here doesn't do justice in the video but tell you what this bike for something that is 30 years old is a beast in the sand like no problems whatsoever um, I'm digging it no pun intended steaks got the firebox Good? That's good. I have a fork and knife, but why? <laughs> really, why? All right, guys, so here we are. We have this finished build, and we've been out here riding in these the sand wash for the last day or two, and I am so impressed with this bike. Let's get into what we've actually done to the bike. Uh, we'll work from the ground up. So first thing that we've done is we added a set of these Tusk Recon tires. The tread on these is phenomenal, really, really good for the sand and all this, this rough terrain we've been riding. Um, the sidewall on these things is pretty impressive. We had a heck of a time getting these spooned onto these, these wheels. So I've been pretty impressed. One with the traction, they handle awesome on the highway. Time will tell how many miles you can actually get out of them, but for a true dual sport tire, uh, they say it's a 50-50, so we'll see what it's like. But so far, I'm really impressed with the traction on it. Come up a little bit higher, you'll see this nice, massive skid plate. We uh, really haven't had to use it yet because the ground clearance on this bike is so big or so tall that we really haven't touched anything yet. Even uh, a couple of jumps that I did um, on, in some of the sand and never even touched the sand. So it's, it's been going, I mean, it's providing a lot of coverage, but like I, get, like I said, so far we haven't necessarily tested it. So time will tell on that as well, but I think that's gonna be a good addition. One thing you'll notice here is we didn't do foot pegs. Couple things with this. So 
I'm actually not too terribly disappointed that we didn't do them yet. Yet is the, is the key word because um, I had every intention of doing foot pegs on this bike. We just didn't get them in in time for this build. So we'll be getting foot pegs on this, on this bike and you'll see those here in a future video. But one nice thing about this, since it does have these perches, it actually pushes the foot peg a little bit away from the bike. So you're not just all up on the, the motorcycle all the time. If you have a wide foot, you know, it doesn't feel like you're gonna fall off the end of the, end of the, the peg. So that's been great. Moving up a little bit further, we have our exhaust. It's a, a Lex exhaust, uh, again, courtesy of um, Rocky Mountain ATV. And it's right here, it's full of dust right now, but it definitely gives uh, the bike just a little bit more of an edge for power. And it's, uh, it sounds pretty dang good. Even with the, the, um, the, soin, the noise reducer in it, it sounds great. So again, moving up. Well, actually one, one thing, let's get this real Mikey, Mikey. We have a frame support in here. So you'll see this nice frame support. This supports the tail of the bike. That way when we put this luggage on here, you don't have to worry about uh, cracking your, your subframe. So that's been a nice addition as well. With that frame support, there is a nice tail rack that's, in, that's being covered up right now, but got the Tusk tail rack on there as well. So we are able to put our Moscow Moto 80 liter uh, reckless bag on here. I've actually haven't as much as I've used rec or as much as I've used the Moscow stuff in the in the past. I have yet to use a reckless system, and I really like it to be honest, especially for this application. It gets everything snug to the bike. You don't get a whole lot of bouncing. Uh, like kind of that's I think everybody's thought is they it's going to be getting a lot of bouncing with when you go over bumps, and with it being secured the way it is, I haven't had any issues with it. Um, I can hold easily just as much stuff in this setup as I can in my two panniers. Uh, we have our Moscow Moto tank bag, so that's been really nice for all my camera gear. It keeps it nice and safe right there. That way, if the bike does go down, which it hasn't gone down yet, for once, for once, um, it's all it's all technique, it's all nice and uh, secure. So moving on to the gas tank right here, we have a plastic gas tank over the metal one. Obviously, plastic isn't going to dent like the metal one will if you have a, a nice off or crash it into something or rocks. But this is 5.8 gallons whereas the other uh, stock one is 2.8 gallons. So we're getting basically double the, the amount of, of fuel here. Uh, let's see what else we got. We have our Tusk hand guards. These are great, nice and protects your hands and that, this nice aluminum backbone. Um, we did this freaking sweet headlight. Let's go ahead and turn that on for you. Quite a bit brighter than stock. High beam, low beam with running light but it just gives it that kind of that modern look. This is a, a classic looking motorcycle, virtually unchanged for 30 years. So doing this headlight just gives it a nice, an update, an updated look. We still have the Gonzo nose on there. I'm not gonna change that. I, I, I like that classic look for the, for the fender. You know, some guys put a CRF fender or whatever on there, but so far, I, I don't mind it. So as far as suspension goes, I didn't touch the suspension. I'm, I was really curious to see what the suspension was like because a lot of guys say, out of the gate, it's, it's, it's great suspension. It is a little soft, as you expect from pretty much any uh, stock manufacturer. But for this kind of stuff, I haven't even come close to bottoming out. So I really like the suspension. In the future, depending on what we do with the bike, I might put a valve kit or some heavier springs, but so far, so good with that. Moving around to the other side, oh, over here. I did get, just kind of for, uh, for looks, did get a uh, Tusk, a red brake lever to kind of wrap in that little bit of Honda, Honda heritage into it. Over here on the other side, we did a same deal. We did a, a foldable shifter. That way when the bike goes down, it's a little bit more protected. Um, that pretty much covers the things that we did to the bike. Oh, we also did some jetting. We did some jetting with the, with the carburetor, which obviously you cannot see right now, but did some jetting in there, which since we changed the exhaust, we want to change the airflow. And we also put a, a lithium ion battery, which, you know, it's a little bit lighter. Not sure that really makes a whole lot of difference, but I'll take everything I can get. Some future things that we're gonna do to this bike. Like I said, this bike, this build isn't over. This is just kind of the first generation of the build, but um, I'm gonna get rid of all this emission stuff. That'll just help it run a little bit better. Um, not have to worry about any of this, any of these issues in the future. Gonna do a uh, aluminum chain guard. Um, just some more, a few more protection parts, maybe, a, uh, some protection for the forks here since they do hang down quite a bit. Um, same thing with the rear, we'll do a 
a, a brake, uh, a disc brake guard, little stuff like that. We'll continue to add on to the bike, man. But so far, um, when we picked up this bike, I had this, this misconception that it's just gonna be a turd and it's far from it. I've really enjoyed this motorcycle so far. I look forward to doing more stuff with this bike. I look forward to you guys joining me along the way. So thanks so much for checking out this video. If you have any questions at all, hit me in the comments below. I would love to share my thoughts and opinions with you and also wanna hear yours. So let me know if you have any questions, tell me your thoughts, and we'll see you in the next one.